Hi and welcome to my channel. It's a pleasure to meet you. And if this is your first time programming and you feel kind of confused, don't worry, I'm here to help. I'm going to post videos about many other problems. I already have some problems, but for um for, for, for the last couple of lectures of the CS50 course, um today we're going to work on the less comfortable version of Mario. And of course I'm going to post the mo more comfortable version as well. But let's first take a look at that one. Um, so we want to recreate that pyramid in C, so the pyramid from um, Mario, so from Super Mario Brothers. So we want to use hashes for the bricks. Um, now this pyramid doesn't look exactly like this one because the hashes don't have the same side, so um, they're um, taller than wider, but that's okay. So. The program we write is going to be called Mario and it's going to allow the user to decide just how tall the pyramid should be by first prompting them for a positive integer between say 1 and 8 inclusive, which means that we won't include 1 and 8. So here's how the program should work if the user inputs um, 8. That's the pyramid we have. And if, if it's 4, by the way, this is the one we're going to work with for the most part. And then, of course, we're going to take the, to test the other options. For 1, we just want to have 1 hash. And if we enter a negative input or 0 or a, two, a number that is too large, we just want to, to ask for a number again until we get a valid 1. So then we have check 50 and style 50. So we're going to use those as well. But let's just go to... The, the ID and start writing code. So um, the first thing we would like to do is to include the standard IO, um, so standard IO H. And we'll also need the CS50 library because that way we can prompt the user for input. So include CS50.h. Okay, we're done with that. If we need anything additional, we can go back here in and include it. But for now, I believe that's everything we need. And now let's create our int main function. So int main void. I'm not explaining that because I know David did on the lecture. So if you're not exactly sure how this works, that's okay. You can just go back to the lecture. Oops, um, like that. And now, what's the first thing we would like to have? We would like to have the height, right? Because uh, we want to allow the user to decide how tall it should be. So I can come here and, and say int height, because the height is always going to be a certain number of blocks. It's going to be an integer. Um, and I'm going to leave it this way for now, because I don't want to set a certain, a fixed value, but instead I want to ask the user for one. So I can use a do while loop. I know that David used them a lot. Even though not every programming language has a dual loop, most of them only use, um, not most of them, but some of them only use while loops, but that's okay, I'm going to use do while for now. So do you, and then while, and the condition. Okay, so what do we want to do? We want to prompt the user for the height, right? So I can say height is going to equal get int. And now inside of these quotes, I want to ask the to, to, to write some kind of a prompt to the user. So enter the height maybe or just the height like that. So what am I doing? I'm asking the user to enter an integer, which is going to be the height of our pyramid, and I'm saving it inside of this height variable. And now, how many times do I want to do that? When do I want to ask for the height? Well, um, I want to ask for it again and again if the user enters. So if the height is less than, let me check the boundaries, um, between 1 and 8. So if it's less than 1 or if it's greater than 8. So I'm going to explain this now. Don't worry if you haven't understood it. But basically what we're doing is we're asking for the height. So user, please enter the height of the pyramid. And... If the user enters 0, for instance, which is less than 1, it is invalid. And since it's invalid, I want to come back and ask for the height again. So while the number is invalid, while it is less than 1 or while it is greater than 8, I want to ask for the height again. 
So if I uh, if I enter zero, it's going to be invalid because zero is less than one, and I'm going to come back and ask again. Let's say that the second time I enter nine, but nine is greater than eight, so we don't we don't want to allow such height. So I'm going to come back and ask for another height. And if I enter say five, that's okay. It's not less than one, and it's not uh, greater than zero. So we're going to to skip that and continue with our code. Okay, so we have this um, do while loop, and let's actually come here and just say print f, print f, um, an integer. So that's a placeholder for integer. I'm going to print an integer, then a new line, and I want to put the height in here just to make sure that this do while loop works properly. So I'm going to make Mario again, and now I want to run it. I'm going to try with an invalid number first. Let's say minus one. Okay, it asks for the height again, then zero. That's invalid. Now one is going to be okay. Let's first try with the big number. So let's say 10. Okay, it doesn't work. And now if I enter a value number between one and eight, let's say four, it works. And it just printed the height. So this do while loop works. And now we want to continue with actually creating our pyramid. So now I want to show you something on my tablet so you can understand the process of creating the pyramid more easily. We have this block this 4x4 four four block here and let's say we want to create a pyramid out of it so the squares with the the black inside are going to be our hashes or just the bricks of the pyramid and then the white squares are just going to be spaces uh, let me actually go back to this example okay so we're going to use a for loop every time you want to generate something like that you use a for loop on the different iterations you want to print different number of hashes and stuff so we're, we have a for loop and let's say that um, we're going to use a variable called i. That's the standard variable used in for loops. So let's say that on the first iteration i is 1. When i is 1, we're on our first row of the pyramid. I can also call it row. Uh, let me just uh, i equal row so that you, you can understand more easily. So when we're on our first row, how many hash do we have? Let's take a look. We have only one hash, right? And it's in the end of the of the cube. So that's going to be our hash here. And the others are going to be empty. These could be dots or just empty spaces. Okay. Then we increment i. We're now on the second row. And how many hashes do we have? Let's see. We have two hashes, right? And they're in the end, in the right end. So let me put those. Okay. So these are going to be hashes. Um, and how many spaces do we have? We have two spaces left. On the third iteration, our row is three. On row number three, we have three hashes. So let me fill in those three squares. And on the last iteration, because we have height of four, so we're iterating up to four, i is exactly four, and we want to, to fill in all the squares, right? Because we have four hashes. Let's do that. Okay, so we already noticed a, noticed a kind of a pattern. The, the current index or the current row is equal to the number of hashes we need. So let me write it somewhere. Uh, let me just know that this is four. You know, that's the height and width actually. It's the same. Um, and let me note that number, the number of hashes is going to be equal, let me actually write it this way, is going to be equal to our current index or the current row. Okay, that's the first, um, that's the first thing we noticed. And now let's take a look at the pattern but of the space. So the pattern of the white squares. We have a total width and height of four. So total is four. When i is one, we have three. Uh, we have one hash and three spaces. So the number of spaces here is essentially the total number, which is four. Oops, total. Maybe I should zoom in a bit, which is four minus the number of hashes, which is one in this case. So it's three spaces. Now let's go on the second row. We have um, the number of spaces is going to be the total. Oh, uh, sorry. The total, which is four 
minus the number of hashes, which is again 2. Now 4 minus 2 is equal to 2. And then on the third row we have the total, so how many squares do we have in total on the third row? So there are 4 minus the number of hashes. So how many hashes do we have? How many black squares? We have 3. Which means that we have one white square or just one space. And on the last row, we have the total, total, which is 4, minus the number of hashes, which is 4 again. And this leaves us with zero spaces. We don't want any spaces on, um, on the last row, like that. So that's the most important relation we found between those. And once we have this, it's actually going to be very, very easy to implement it in code. Okay, so let's go back to our IDE. So I believe it's going to be easier for you to understand if I use the row variable. Let me come here and create a for loop. So for int row equals 1. So we start on the first row of our pyramid. Well, we get to the fourth uh, fourth row, but uh, but we don't know we, we don't know what the height will be. It could be four. That's the example I gave. But it could be f uh, it could be five or seven. Uh, it could be two. So we we want to just use the height variable. So the value is going to be replaced by whatever the user has entered. So while we get to the until we get to the height, um, we want to increment the row by one. So we start if if height is four, we start at one, and every time we add one, so it's going to be two, three, and four. If the height is seven, we start from one, and then we have two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's where we end. Okay, we have that. Now something that I personally wouldn't do, but I believe is going to make it more clear for you, is I'm going to create one more variable, which is going to be called hashes. So what's the number of hashes? Well, it's always equal to the current row, right? That's what we uh, what we noticed when we were taking a look at it on my tablet. So the number of hashes is always equal to the current row. If we are on the first row, we want one hash, the second row, two hashes, etc. You don't have to do that. I'm just making it easier for you. And what's the number of spaces? Let's take a look at that. So in spaces, Let's just write hashes count and spaces count. Now, it's uh, the total height, for instance, 4, minus the current row, right? Or minus the hashes count, actually. Yeah, it's easier with that variable. So if the height is 5, we will have, uh, and we are on the first row, we will need one hash and 5 minus 1, which is 4 spaces. When, when we are on the second row, we have... 5 minus 2, which is 3 spaces, etc. And now, once we have those, we only need some, some nested for loops in order to print them on the screen. So first, we'll start with the spaces, because if we go here, we can notice that we have four, uh, 3 spaces first, and then 1 hash, then 2 spaces, one, 2 hashes, but we always start with the spaces. So, 4... Um, I'm going to say int i, I'm, I'm going to use i here, that's just the current counter. So we start from 1, and now uh, we want to iterate until we get to the, to the space count, i++. plus plus. So what does this mean? I start at 1, so I print 1, uh, let's say that um, sp we have to print 3 spaces. So we start at 1, we print 1, 2, 3. We've got to the 3, which is the space count, and we end the for loop here. So on each iteration, I just want to print f, um, an empty string, you know, a space. For now, I'm going to use a random dot just because it's more noticeable, but I'm going to remove it later and just leave it like that. Okay, so that we started 1 and we print 3 um, spaces or three dots in this case um, if we are on the first row and then on the second row with we, we print two spaces etc after we have printed the spaces we want to use another for loop but this time to print the hashes so it's pretty much the same I'm going to use a different variable so I'm going to call J that's uh, you know they're usually I J K uh, so J now we don't want to end 
at the space count but rather at the hashes count so we started with one let's say that the hashes count is um two we want to print two hashes we start with one we will say one two hashes that's over um and i want to print a hash okay that seems reasonable now let's come here and say make mario i just want to test it oops we have a problem somewhere let's see um, yeah, because I have coded spaces count, not space count. Okay. Let's do it again. Okay, this time everything is fine. Let's run it and see what we have. Let's say hide a 4. Oops. That's not exactly what we looked for, right? Now, what's the reason? Um, we're actually printing them in the correct order. And if I replace this with space, it's going to be 3 spaces, 1 hash, then 2 spaces, 2 hashes, then um, 1 space... Uh, or one dot and three hashes and then just four hashes. But we don't have any new lines and we want every row to be on a new line, right? So how can we fix that? It's very, very easy. We just come here below the four loops and we just write, oops, um, print F a new line. So when you have printed all of the spaces and all of the hashes for this current row, I want you to add new line before going to the next row. So let's try that. Make Mario, run Mario 4. And that looks very good. That's actually what we expected. And let me just remove the dots, because now we can see it. So we have three dots or three spaces in one hash. Then we have two spaces, two hashes, one space, three hashes, and in the end, four hashes. And let me replace the dots with an empty string, like that, with a space. Make it again. Run it. Four. Okay, that looks awesome. We're done. Um, and let's just try some different inputs. Let's try two, and then one. One's interesting. Uh, okay, now let's try with one. Uh, I, don't, I didn't have to make it again, but okay, pretty good. We only have one hash. That's what we expected. Let's just run um, check 50, um, or maybe before that, style 50 is going to be good, because if we have some, um, okay, so we have, we have some spaces we want to remove, the, uh, or actually we want to add them on line 10, okay, that should be okay, that was a tab missed, let's try again. Okay, looks good. We can add comments. I'm not going to add those now, but you can. It's totally fine and it's even recommended. Now, let's let's use check 50 to, to see if it actually works, if it passes all the tests. Okay, and we can notice that all of our tests are green, which means that we have passed them successfully and we can, uh, we can just submit our solution. So, that was everything for this video. If it's still hard, if it's still confusing, don't worry, you can rewatch it. If you have any um, particular questions to ask, you can enter my Discord server. It's uh, created uh, for CS50 students. I'll be glad to help you there. And you can always message me on any other social media, but I'm mostly active on Discord. So I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.